Hello everyone, we are now in the third place match of the StarCast TV Star League. We've got Light versus Beast, a Terran versus Zerg. You know, I really had hopes that Light would make it to the finals, but here he is in the third place match. Still obviously a great showing, and then an incredible showing from Beast this season. He's been playing absolutely out of his mind. He's been hitting some good all-ins, he's been hitting some good mind games, but also had a good series versus Rush, and in the final game with Macro game, could have gone either way, uh, really. But in the end, Beast getting knocked into the loser, or not the loser's match, the third place match. So we're going to go into our map picks for this series. Let's see what they are. We've got Jungle Story first, an interesting pick, I guess. Not that surprising that Beast wants to play on an unorthodox map. Then we've got Polypoid, Standard, Pretty much what you're expecting to see from light then we've got champion no shocker to me there he had an amazing game versus rush on this map then we're going back to standard Vermeer, then luna retro and sandstorm this season literally nobody wanted to play on sandstorm i don't know why because sandstorm a remake of blue storm and in my opinion tough map for terran players zergs have a really easy job microing mutas on the natural hard to uh, play versus Protoss when they go carriers, but in the end it doesn't look like we're going to get many games on this map. So let's get into our bracket and see how this tournament unfolded. You can see on the top side we had Rush going all the way to the finals where he'll be facing off versus Snow. Snow had an insane run. I mean look at the scoreboard. 2-1 versus Sock. 3-0 Royal. 4-0 light. He has gone 9-1 and one in the tournament. He did get lucky getting all Terrans. I think it's safe to say everybody knows Snow is an expert PVT, but that is an impressive performance. Taking down Royal, who's an ASL champion, 3-0. Taking down Light, also an ASL champion, 4-0. The only game he ended up losing was versus Sock, who actually has a really solid gasless into quick upgrade style. So, with all that said, let's get into our first game of the day in our third place match. And here we are. We are on a jungle story and in the top right we have Mr. Light. And in the bottom right we have our Zerg. It is Beast. Now, like I was saying, we've seen a lot of different styles from Beast this tournament. He's had all in, had some nine games with the Matt Fling, on Polypoid versus Rush, all last week. What I'm really most looking for is the build order from Light, because, you know, I had high expectations in this series. You no, know, he really does like to play a big style and turn to put off the best he expects to do. Baron vs. Zerg, what can we come to expect here? I, when I think of Light, I think of somebody that does more management type of build, free rack, four rack attack. But he also has a lot of different builds in the arsenal, like all the rest I wonder if he'll actually pull that out here. So far, nothing unusual going on. We've got Depot in the main, as expected. And then we've got Overlord from Beast. We still could see an Overpool. But I'm not really that big of a fan of Overpool unless you think you're getting 8 racks. And I think Light, out of all people, or out of all the pros, is... He definitely 8 racks, is obviously, but not as much as someone like Rush, in my opinion, or Royal. And we do see Beast. He is going to go for the standard 12 hatch. Not going to go for 11 hatch, which we've seen a mix in from a few Zergs in this tournament. And I don't expect him to be greedy here and build additional drones, but you know, sometimes when you are playing someone like Light, you feel like you got to get a, a slight advantage here, but not going to be the case this time. Does not mix in any additional drones, and Light going for the standard scout timing is going to most likely find Beast last because of this direction that he went. May end up actually sending out a second scout. I think that's the safe move versus someone like Beast. And Beast will find Light first, and we'll see that there is a forward Rax 
And this Rax actually, I don't think, has a good SimCity on the left side. I think there's a gap between the egg and the Rax, and clearly there's a gap right there. But I could be wrong on that, you know, Jungle Story not in the ladder map pool. I'm just making a guess on how much of an opening there is. Well, drone, cancel, and should get out. Okay, and the second SCV ended up moving out, and he will find Beast with that secondary scout. Meanwhile, in Beast's main, he only has two on gas. That's an interesting gas management right there. And... Okay, now light comes in. And, okay, again, this could be another mind game. Even though he did go for a standard, I think, like, two-minute, five-second gas timing, the fact that Lair has not been shown may kind of tr trick Light into thinking that this was speed first, because Lair should have already started, but we've got a three Marie move out. Uh, I don't think it's been spotted. Okay, he's going to turn around. You know, three Marines, if all three of them connect onto a Ling, you can two-shot the Lings, but if they even mismanage or misfire one time, that Ling will survive, obviously, and you're going to be in a world of hurt, four versus three. So I think that was a smart move out from Light, put some pressure on, and then back off. And in response, we have a second Rax going up. We've got Academy coming down pretty soon, 340 gas. So this should be like a four-minute Academy. This is more macro-oriented, not somebody like... Uh, not, not an Academy timing that Ample likes to go for where he's stimming across the map. Now, we've got additional Lings being built, but remember, this is high ground. I don't know how effective Lings coming through are uh, coming from low ground into high ground are gonna, are gonna work out, but actually, this is a ton of Lings. This is like 15 Lings. Light may actually be in trouble here. <laughs> we could see a quick ending to this game if he doesn't plug that wall up. Speed is already done. And here we go. I don't think he's turning around. I, I think we're just going for it. And... He does jump on it. No SCVs in the front. Um, Marine pops out in the wrong, wrong side and gets taken down. But an instant reaction with the SCVs allows for the Marines to easily hold this. Bunker going down. More links being built. SCVs still holding the line. And none of the links are really going to get in. They get one Marine. And that was a huge commitment from Beast here. Bunker is going to complete and actually i think this may be all she wrote for beast that was not enough damage he got like four scvs which is decent but look at the worker count 25 to 13 if we get a look at the natural uh i guess we're not going to look there but there's no gas being mined there <laughs> and if you don't have gas mining well how many mutas can you actually build in this spire is extremely late extremely late so this is going to be like six minute 30 mutas or something despite it being a five uh despite it being like a two minute gas timing and beast knows where he is he's got them all in this and just pray that he wins with it there's no way he can transition this not versus someone like light but two fire bats are out scan goes off what does he see he sees the natural just now getting the gas no econ more link thing go so light literally all he has to do is make sure that it is spire and not hydrogen which he does see he canceled something. I think he canceled his factory, maybe? Anyways, when you go in, and there's no way. Then GG comes out, and that is going to be game way, game one heading Light's way. So, a bit of a misstep there from Beast. Maybe he saw the opening, um, or saw the racks placement like I saw it, where I thought that there was going to be potentially a couple openings but there was no opening between the racks and the egg obviously the gap between the depot and the racks was quite big but not enough for him to actually get in but you got to give credit to light like that was an instant reaction with the scvs and they all got into the right position i think a lot of other terrans would click there and you know some scvs would get out of line and you know bug out and then links let in near dead so well done from light let's get into game two it's gonna be just not pick polypoid and again, in the bottom right, our parent player, we have light. And then this time around, left, we've got heat, which is off on. Light has gotten a position that I think everybody knows that I love. 
is the one position on the map where you can go for a solid complete wall. Of course, I can use the off to the wall on the left, but your marines are popping out on the wrong side of that barracks. So definitely prefer bottom right on polypoid for sure, and versus someone like Beast, anytime you can limit the ability for an all-in. That's going to be fantastic. Now, because this is such a good map for walling, you do see oftentimes a lot of 8 racks, and that SCV is going to go forward and go for the 8 racks. Okay, now in Beast Main, again, Overlord has been built. No spawning pool just yet. But from Beast's point of view, playing someone, versus, uh, someone of this caliber, you know 8 racks could definitely be in the arsenal. You know that light could be bottom right because you spawn top left so i think it is something you should consider going for over pool or 12 pool here but it's going to be just another 12 hatch and we do have the wall coming in there's the depot as expected if there if it was an early pool it gives light the option to float the racks back into position and just be completely fine so very standard play from him now with this wall you have a lot of options here. You can go command center. You can go tech. Like we could potentially see a 1-1-1 type of play. But if we were gonna see the 1-1-1, gas needs to be going down basically now or a couple seconds before. So it doesn't seem like we're gonna have a aggressive opener from light this time, other than of course the initial marine pressure. But with it being cross spawn, how much damage can he actually get done? SCVs are going to see the bad news that this guy spawned top left, and that is obviously not ideal if you are a Terran player going for an 8 racks. He is still going to move out with his two Marines though. Expect to see three, and then probably no more Marines. SCV coming from the top side, and also SCV being spotted by the Overlord now confirms pretty much to Beast that this is definitely going to be an 8 racks. There's no other reason to send two SCVs like this, but the pool's basically done. And I don't think that this is going to do much damage at all, but he's still gonna commit. We've got a very far back bear, uh, bunker. A lot of Terran players are doing that these days where they put the bunker very, very far away and then kind of leapfrog forward. But I don't even think leapfrogging here is gonna even get in range of the hatchery. It will probably force... A, okay, actually that bunker is extremely far forward. The second one is really far back. Things are already out though, here we go. Six lanes versus just three marines. And the bunker, that's gonna be annoying. This was a big commitment from Terran. This is two bunkers being built. There's no command center just yet, and the marines are just gonna try and be annoying, force more lanes. This is actually doing more damage than I was anticipating, but he is damaging his own econ, just now getting the command center up and this is 10 lings, 10 lings with no SCB to repair. He could kill his bunker right now if he wanted. In the main of Beast, I don't, oh, he has gotten his lair going. So he is doing a good job with his build. This Rax is 100% dead. Three Marines, a bunker, completely gone. Gets almost no value, really, I would say, other than forcing a lot of lings. But look at that sneaky SCB being hidden, and he's going to go in and get some intel. Now remember, Beast has not scouted at all, so he doesn't know where Terran is. He also doesn't know that this is a wall, so he is going to have to guess on what the follow-up is. Lair is basically done. Spire should be starting in just a few seconds, and we do have a big drone cycle right there. That's nice. Going to get that econ rolling, and we do have gas coming down, plus academy and second racks already 50% done, so everything looks very normal, like you would expect to see after an 8 racks like this. Not going to be rushing plus one weapon, instead going to go for uh, rush on the academy, try and get his stem, try and get his range. Now knowing this, or knowing that he shut down the 8 racks so easily, I wonder if Beast will try and take a third base. And there's the answer. Top middle, I think, is a drone, and that could be a third hatch being put down. There it is, so really fast third hatch. And I don't think Light really will have the Marine. Okay, never mind. Actually, he already has seven Marines. I was going to say, I don't think he's going to have the Marine count plus Academy timing to go and punish this third base. But maybe he will. Spire hasn't really been delayed at all. 
so I think he would have to be careful about making a move out. Yeah, I, I, I feel like that Spire's way too close to being complete to move out without range. Mutalists are just way too strong against Terran when the Marines don't have any range. There's so many games that I've played where I feel like my army's huge, I make a move out, and I'm like, yeah, come at me, bro, let's fight. And then we fight, and I lose everything, and I'm just so confused, and then I realize, oh, I forgot my range. So critical upgrade uh, when fighting Mutalists. We do actually have a move out. I'm surprised that this is actually happening. There is no Ling speed. We've got a scan coming down. What does he see? He sees no Sunkins at the natural and tons and tons of drones. So big econ from Zerg. He didn't scan the main, the main, so he doesn't know that there's a third hatch on location at top middle. Turret's coming down. Pretty standard. Meanwhile, is that could be a hidden, a hidden drone. It could also be another beast mind game. If the drone gets spotted here, Terran probably doesn't scout anywhere else, right? Like, if you shut down this drone, why why would I expect there to be another base somewhere? Marine is going to die, though. Goodbye. And Beast immediately is going to put down a fourth hatch. So he's already planning for some sneaky moves here. Maybe hide his tech at that location. Maybe sack top middle and just transfer everything to bottom left. Light's going to have to do a diligent job sniffing this one out. In Light's main, we did have his eBay right next to his second rack, so I don't think that's the third racks, and that is a factory at the bottom side of his base. Interesting racks placement there, just moving it out of the way so he can get units onto the map a little bit easier, but look at what Beast has done. Instead of ramping up his mute account really high, what is it, six? Instead, he's been focusing mostly on his econ. He's got a good drone count at this point in the game. Ling Muta is definitely not enough to engage this army, but Light doesn't know that the Muta count is not that high, so he's not feeling confident about moving out, not just yet. Okay, doesn't take too much damage there, but the stems are doing a lot of damage to Terran. What is it, three medics? Okay, gets that medic, and now the three medics is now two medics. Okay, now there's three, but either way, not much energy left on those medics to heal up the marines. Coming in for another attempted attack on the marine forces. Another stem picks off one marine. Takes a lot of damage there though. And we've got five racks as a follow-up for light. So he's gonna be putting on some big pressure. Starports are pretty damn fast for our build order. Remember, this was an eight racks into academy and he's still hitting a clean like 10 minute vessel time. Really nice play from Light, and this is what I really wanted to see in the main of Zerg. What's our follow-up? It does seem like we're just going pure mutas, but we do have a building at top middle. What is it? Hydrogen and Queen's Nest. So this does look like it's going to be the Guardian build, but unbeknownst to Light, bottom left has already been taken, and it is going to be Lurcher upgrade. That means that this is actually going to be Defiler, not going to be Guardian Hydralisk. You just come in and get a couple of Marines, but overall, not that much damage. Now you do have to remember that Zerk has done no damage to the eco of Terran. And if Terran doesn't have their eco harassed at all, Terran doesn't really mind needling at all. Okay, now this is getting annoying. Bouncing off of that refinery, killing like three or four Marines, and now getting the refinery. That's gonna limit the amount of gas income and the amount of vessels that Light can actually build. This was a really nice play from B. And he's still got a lot of lane and he was just sitting outside of the base waiting to pounce on these marines and they overstep. More marines falling, a couple more mutilists falling, but yeah, that is a lot of stuff. And look at the drones at bottom left. We've almost got even drone count to Terran SCVs. This is a huge econ. I'd really like to see these he put down even maybe even another macro hatch. Just start pumping out tons and tons of units. Another turret dies. And start bouncing off shots on that factory. Okay, that is a huge army from Terran, and it's gone unscouted! How did it get past all the Lings and Mutas? He didn't see it! Okay, now he sees it. That is so much stuff that actually got out onto the map. I'm surprised it got that far. Now, what is it, 20 Mutas? I don't think he can engage. This could be a mistake. Marines are plus one weapon, but he's still gonna go for it. Whoa, that was not close. 
I thought Marines were going to do better than that. The Mutas just completely crushed. And we've got like 15 Mutalists left over, something like that. Vessels are just now starting. You can see a lot of scans go off, trying to figure out what the hell went wrong. And the answer is you just moved out without critical mass, man. And now Light's army is completely reset. He sees the bad news that it was held without even showing lurkers, without any upgrades on the ground. Zerg is just now starting to get their evolution chambers and Light, what can he really do? He's obligated to go into seven rack just so he doesn't die. Double bunker. There are still no lurkers. I wonder what Light is thinking seeing this. Like, there's literally no hydras at all. There's no defiler mound. Is there ultralist cavern? Bottom left, maybe? <sighs> okay, yeah. Ultralist cavern, bottom left. So we're going to have ultras as a follow-up. Now, this could backfire because I think Zerg does not have any armor just yet. Terran did not have the fastest plus one weapon but he did hit his uh, his science facility timing pretty nicely so plus two should be on the way and you never want to be down in upgrades if you can go go for ultra style scan went off at top right and mid left he still doesn't know about bottom left man so that was a really good placement of the fourth base for beast he's getting away with absolute murder here another big terran move out not as big as the first time though Vessels in the army, however, double irradiate is obviously a complete game changer. Now, light, he is going to expand to bottom middle. That's a somewhat mm, harder base to defend, but it does give you the additional gas. I think there's also an SCB at the middle only, so you put down a fourth command center to try double expand and catch up. A lot of Mutalists die there, but at this point in the game, you know, they've really kind of done all they needed to do. At this point, he's, all he has to make sure is he does not lose his fourth base bottom left. How many racks is this? Yes, yeah, seven. And Terran will see that this is where all the key buildings are. The Ultralist Cavern, the fourth base, the fourth gas. Lurkers coming through that night is mean that this base cannot be busted, and Light is going to double expand, as expected. But the problem for him is Beast Eco is nuts. 53 drones. He's got almost a 2k gas bank. We're going to see 10 Ultralists on the field pretty quickly. Just really needs to start using that larva for the Ultras. He's got huge Eco. He can definitely afford them. Don't want to let Terran get into an insane vessel count. Because if they can get up to like 8 vessels and just irradiate the Ultralists and run away the main army, well, those Ultralists aren't going to be that great, obviously. Terran surprisingly did get their bottom middle base up and running. As I mentioned, that base has a third gas, and that could be critical for light in this game. Despite um, assuming that I think that Terran's going to go for six to eight vessels, he could use that additional gas to start going into battle cruisers. You know, battle cruisers are very expensive in terms of gas and also minerals. Uh, we may start seeing that type of production, and there it is, physics labs coming down. They hit really hard versus Ultralist, so definitely going to be a powerful unit. But the real threat is Zerg's upgrades are now starting to kick in. Fourth base Econ is really starting to hit at this point. Like, we've got all the saturation we need. We're approaching that key point in the game that I always say is around the 17 minute mark where Zerg just explodes. I would really like to see more macro hatches from Beast. I see only one in his main. But other than that, he's crushing it so far. Mutalists and Scourge get taken down, but Terran is just patrolling back and forth, waiting for an opening. Again, the Mutalists are going to be denied. Ultralists are out, but there's vessels, and these are probably going to get irradiated. There goes one, there goes the other one. Alright, I'm a little bit worried that we may have missed our Ultra time. Okay, I take that back. I didn't realize we also had Defilers. <laughs> So the Filer, Ultra, Lurker, Ling, but you can see all the damage these Irradiates are doing. The Ultralists may actually end up killing a couple drones. There goes one of them. And Zerg. Okay, more Ultralists at the top. The Filer, that's a lot of Lurkers. But 
Light's doing a really good job to just manage this game right now. Like, he's got a sizable army. He's approaching Max. He's got seven barracks, at least. He may even have triple starport pretty soon, but I think if he, if he is plus two weapon right now, it just hit. There's the third starport, so there's going to be a lot of battle cruisers. Yeah, plus two just kicked in. He does have upgraded man, and we finally find the... Finding an opening at the mineral only, and there's definitely not enough here. This is going to get blown up, or should get blown up. There's not a fire though, so maybe not. Light scrambling to get into position. Lurker's going to be setting up on the high ground. Karen going to engage to be able to take down these lurkers. And meanwhile, Zerg is going to lose all of these ultralists. Is going to knock down a lot of the SCVs, but there's also an attack at bottom middle at the same time. And this base is going to be ransacked. A lot of the SCV is going to be taken down, and this could be the beginning of the end for light. You can see the supplies are plummeting in Zerg's favor. That is a forced lift. A lot of SCVs died there. What is it, like 12 SCVs ended up going down. More Ultras and Lings flooding across the map. It doesn't really look like the vessel count got whittled down that much. Yeah, I still see something like eight, and the Marine count is getting massacred. Down to almost sub 100 for light. Yeah, there's just way too many Lings and Ultras. If this is not GG, I don't think it will be much longer, but Karen's eco is in the dump now. Those may be the GG scans going off. Yeah, you hear tons of them going off. And whenever you hear that, that is the signal. There it is, GG. And Beast, he will strike back in game one and put a point on the board. So really impressive play there from Beast. Shut down the eight racks pretty much uh, immediately. It did almost no damage i think his response was great with the third hatch immediately getting his econ rolling and then clearly the fourth base at bottom left was very well hidden and you know in a macro game i was thinking well i feel like i'm betting on light all day every day because light is just so good terran versus zerg but beast actually managed to get a win and it was a solid win like there was no point in that game where he was under threat so that's really well done from him and let's get into game three. We're going into champion. This is Beast pick. And like I was saying last week when we saw him versus Rush, he had a really, really close game there. Like it could have gone his way, but Rush just barely held on. Hey, in the top left, we have uh, And in the bottom right. And we've got light. Player map. The likelihood of an eight rack coming is kind of low. I don't really expect to get any rack here. I, I feel like it's going to be decent. Around the time to be nine pool, over pool, twelve pool. That's the player map. So because of that, I hope that this is going to be a standard opener. I really do hope to get to see light off the play. No, I really do love Vulture, I think it's very good. It does kind of hinder your build at the beginning. And I would love to see somebody with the expertise of light pull it out. And it's, it's very strong. Every time I see him play it, it does look like a Vulture to find follow up. And anybody that's watched my team, you know, I love next to me. And I can Vulture to find that kind of tells me that we can see a next to but we actually have Depot at the entrance and even though i have not played champion this does remind me of butter in terms of that little tiny choke i'm assuming that's going to be a full wall there and there it is now generally pros do not full wall so already i'm thinking that this could be two port rate at least if i was there here and scouted this that's what i would be thinking now it is light light doesn't strike me as a two port rate type of player. If this was JYJ or Leda, I'm betting money that it's going to be two port rate, right? But this really does look like it could be a tech play. However, Light could be going for the mind game, going for the full wall, and not going for tech at all. Maybe he thinks that this is going to be a, something like a four pool or a five pool with it being a two player map. But you know, actually, maybe that's not a full wall. If we look at the depot up against the ledge, it looks like there could be a, a small opening up there. Not really sure, but either way, even if it's not a full wall, that's such a tiny, tiny entrance at the top side of the depot that... Wait, what? 
Okay. <laughs> I was I was about to lose my mind. I was thinking like, wait a minute, is there a back pathway that I forgot about champion? But that is just gonna be a command center and he's gonna try and hide it and float it over the ledge. So like I said, this is definitely a mind game. Trying to act like it's, it's gonna be one, 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 but it ends up actually just being standard command center follow up. Now I've heard comments from Zerg pros about how it's hard to play versus players that play like this because you gotta guess what it is, right? If you think it's one one one, it's actually a command center. Well, all of a sudden you're building a sunken, maybe you're building a hydra den, getting a couple hydras for race, and they never come. So it kind of cripples your your build from Zerg's point of view, and you're kind of just obligated at that point to either play a macro game from a deficit or try an all in. So this is gonna be a rough situation for Beast. I hope he pokes in with the Overlord a little bit farther. Ooh, he may spot the command center. And if he spots the command center, this is going to be an amazing opener for him because he's not gonna have to build a sunken. Oh, he click it. Oh, he sees it. So this is this is great. Now he knows that he has not been uh, forced into, or he has not been duped. He's gonna be able to power like crazy. Terran's gonna be locked behind the depot wall for a long time look at this beast knows dude you're not attacking i'm just gonna go take a third base immediately this is a really smart move from beast here however he does not know that this was a two racks as a follow-up so a academy timing could be kind of dangerous that academy is almost done by the way so last game we had like a 420 academy because it was an eight racks fail this time we have the academy basically finishing at 420. This is going to be an extremely fast timing. Zerg has not put down their third hatch just yet. Okay, there it is, at top right. And Terran is desperately trying to figure out where is that third hatchery. Now, I also don't think Terran scouted at all. So he doesn't know that there's been no sunken, but when he comes in here and sees that this Zerg, first off, did not get speed, did not get sunken, did not build a hydrogen, he's not going to be happy about that. You do lose a couple SCVs when you do this move where you're hiding the command center and float it uh, towards the natural. So it's just going to be a, a complete loss of those SCVs that you can never recover. But we do have a Terran move out right now. I don't even think he has a medic. Okay, he does have two medics. But Stim is not done just yet. Sunken is actually kind of late. He may have to build additional links. No, Terran's not willing to commit. He's going to wait and scan. What does he scan? Okay, he skins the natural and he sees that there are two something being built. And now what's he gonna do with this army? Zerg did build a few lings, but it's not enough to actually engage Terran if he finds top right, and he, he must know that it's top right. Because he's going directly there, and that base is gonna be denied. I, I feel like it should be denied. However, it leaves the Terran main completely exposed. There's no units there. If there are any, it's not very many. If Stem, he's gonna kill this Marine Stem and back off. And the Lynx are really not gonna do much damage. He's gonna go into the natural net. Oh, a double Stem. That's gonna be painful. SCV's pulled off the line. And he does get into the main. However, oh, that was great. Got rid of all six Marines in total. That's a big loss. And unless my eyes deceive me, I saw no turrets in the main. Terran needs to scramble now to get some turrets up. Muta's trying to gauge the army in the center of the map. Can it take down this army, actually? That's one marine gone. Another marine gone. These four, actually, it's just four Mutas may actually kill this whole army. Okay. He's going to take down the whole army. Going to kill the fire bats. Forces out a lot of turrets. Killed all the marines in the natural. Despite Beast losing his third hatch, I think that this is a playable position. Light is in trouble because his barrack count is really low. It's just two. He's going to rely on just turrets, really, to try and save the day. Saving these medics is pretty huge. You never want to have to rebuild uh, medics. One, they cost gas. And two, obviously build time on the, on the barracks where you need to build marines desperately. Look how many turrets he's built. There are six turrets at the natural. We haven't even taken a look at the main. That turret's going to die. Got really lucky there taking down a mutilist. Oh, another Muta almost dies. Oh, it's so close to dying. So close. Not able to get the killing blow on it, though, and that means that Zerg is going to rack up some more SCV kills. 
The Zerg Econ is very down in the dumps though. Only 19 drones. We've got Hive already coming. Jeez Louise. So this is going to be a Zerg all in. Terran is holding on by the skin of his teeth to hold his natural. A lot of being, a lot of damage being done towards the nat. There is no bunker though. So something like a Lurker Flood could be devastating. I think in Terran's main, Factory is just now coming up. But despite losing so many SCVs, because Zerg is all inning, uh, Zerg needs to do crippling amounts of damage here. He does scan the natural and see that there is a Hydra den. And you would think maybe it could be Guardian Hydra, but I actually don't think it's Guardian Hydra this time. I think it is going to be Defiler Rush. Now, Terran has kind of gotten up a decent army now. What is it, about 15? Green Medic? No plus one just yet. I don't think Terran is even close to having plus one weapon, but he does have stem in range. Again, getting out onto the map, trying to alleviate some of this pressure. Another good stem. Does some damage. Okay, going for Lings. So he's going to try and make the move that he did on Polypoid, where he just overruns this army with Mutas and Lynx, and I, I think this army is even smaller than the army on Polypoid. This could actually work. The Lynx have not been spotted. Is he gonna go? There's no plus one weapon on the Terran. Oh, here we go. Mutas gonna jump on this. This might be it. Holy smokes, this army got crushed. Just like Polypoid, Light, you did not learn your lesson. You gotta have an actual army before you step out. Zerg plus one, I guess, just kicked in, and that's what triggered the, the Ghost Witch. But still, Zerg is completely all in here. He only has 18 drones. There's the Defiler Mound, but Terran has absolutely no army on the ground. I'm actually surprised the Lings didn't actually try and run in and win the game. I feel like he could have gotten a lot of the uh, turrets taken down, but the real threat is those Lurkers being more. How's he going to ever kill these? He does have Starport, but I don't know if he actually has double Starport. How many vessels can he actually get up is the question. Tank comes out, okay. That tank coming in. Tanks are obviously great versus workers, but not so great versus defilers for workers. Muta's gonna take down this depot. I guess that's really all he can do with the mutas. There's so many turrets that you can't really attack anywhere else. Lurkers are getting into position though to set up a containment, and we've seen this before. Once Terran gets locked in their base with uh, mass lurkers, it's really hard to get out. Maybe he can push it back with his first two tanks? I'm not too sure. There we go. Defiler is on the way, and we may be moments away from seeing Beast take a 2-1 lead in this series. Very exposed tank, and it gets taken down. I feel like this is it, dude. Is Beast really going to go up in this series? He played so well versus Rush. Now he's bringing it to light. There's five lurkers. Defiler is so close to being here. He just needs to consume. That's it. Oh, he sees the bad news. He scans the consume and he is no counter to this. Dude, Beast, he's owning today. This is pure macro and polypoint. Now we've got pure, maybe not necessarily pure macro right here, but great micro with the mutas. And then we've got a solid follow-up. There's no answer. There's five lurkers. We have one science vessel. That's it. Tanks are not going to save the day. I don't even know if you had like 20 fire bats if it would save the day. Here we go. This is probably it. Gets all the dark swarms in. He's going to completely clog that entrance. Oh my gosh, so many more time. The natural's completely gone. Well, I, at least I, I think the natural's going to be completely gone. But yeah, he has another defiler. He needs to get the defiler into that mineral line. Is what it needs to do. Because these SCVs cannot escape. That tank's gonna die. Oh, actually, he's just going for the killing blow. Uh, there's a lot of fire bats, but there's not enough DPS. However, tank trying to hold the line. SCVs are still alive at the natural, technically, but I think at this point it's gonna be all she wrote. This should be GG. There it is. It is GG. And we've got Beast bringing it today, man. Up 2 1 versus Light. You know, in the earlier stages of the bracket I was predicting light to go the distance but here we are in the third place match obviously still a great showing but he's down in the series I can't believe it I would have 100% uh, assumed that light was gonna 
you know, run away the, with this. The light is so good with Terran versus Zerg. Like, man, I'm, I'm shocked. Beast is crushing it this season. It is going to be light's map pick again. We're going to go standard once more. It is going to be Vermeer. And if you're light here, what do you really do? You've lost the macro game on Polyvoid. You did devastating damage in game three, killing the hatchery. But your move out with Marine Mac into these lane units, it's not working. Anytime he stepped out, he's had his whole army wiped. Maybe we need to switch it up. Maybe we need that box. Like maybe we need to get a couple of walkers in the air to ensure that sort of you just get taken. Here we are on Vermeer. This time around, we're on the left side. We have beast in top left and light in bottom left. We have vertical spawn. On Vermeer. Anytime I see a big macro game on this map, I get really excited. And as I mentioned in the previous past, one of my favorite games on Vermeer, Mong versus Wolfie in AFL, I think from four seasons ago, three seasons ago, maybe. Really, really good macro game. We had a mechanic in the stand up, and it went really, really deep into the lake. I highly recommend that one. If you want, have not seen it, you can check this out on our hotel, on our archive TV channel. So it's just hope it's just long and sure it will pop up. And this time around, what I thought could have been an 8 rack is actually going to be a semi wall. Well, I guess it could be a full wall. We could go Depot, Rax Depot. And Beast this time. Still no early pool. I thought for sure by now we would have seen an early pool opener from him. But he is just going to go 12 pack once more. I mean, I don't blame him. I'm up 2 1 versus arguably the best Terran versus Zerg player on the planet. Why on earth would I ever change anything up? Not only have I beat him in a macro game, I, I've beaten his 8 rack. I've lost my third hat and still won the game. So I'm I'm not I'm not hating it. This time we did have a little bit of a mix up. It is going to be an eleven hat. So he may be expecting that there could be another eight rack this time, but it is not gonna be the case. And light he is going to not find beast at bottom right, so most likely we're gonna have another double scout. And once again we do have the standard all up. Two minute gas from Beast. You're going to be going into what most people on the ladder play these days, which is just really early fire timing. Try and get damage a ton with the mutas. And then you kind of have a lot of flexibility, right? You can go fast workers. I've seen some players go five mutas. They hide a hydrogen and then go fast workers and kill you. You build all this infrastructure with your turret and you just don't have as much stuff on the ground. And I think that could actually be a smart move. We've seen, what, what is it, like two rack play from light in a couple of these games. Low, not necessarily low marine count, but definitely not high. Drone is going to get intercepted, may actually die. Okay, that was a really good reaction to actually save that drone. Really nicely done. And the SCV does see that again, this is just a normal hatch timing. And there's the second Rax once again. So this series, Light has really come prepared that he just wants to two Rax every game. I think that's smart versus someone like Beast who does have the potential to all in you often. If you're really lacking on units, you could get caught. So I think that is a good adaptation coming into the series. But so far, Beast has done a really good job of handling the two Rax. We do have gas coming in for light, and I'm guessing that that's an academy being built in his main. Yep, another really fast academy, like 325 academy, something like that. So again, it's gonna be lining up with what we saw last game, which is basically a 420 completed academy. Probably gonna have another attempt to take down a third hatch. I hope Beast builds a hatch in his main, maybe at the top right corner of his base and hide it so that Terran gets out on the map looking for it and then actually, you know, it just doesn't exist. And maybe Zer could go for like a link counter or something. We'll see though. Spire coming down, nothing unusual. Ring count still kinda lowish. Sitting at just six. We've got more lings being built. 
and the SCV does spot a handful of length, but he does not see an excessive amount. So good job from Beast to disguise his hand right now. And he is going to poke in and see that, hey, you've got more Marines than you should have at this point if you're going eBay. So he should know that this is going to be a two rack. Now this is a lot of links. This, this amount of links all of a sudden puts Beast kind of all in here. He doesn't necessarily have to attack with this, but he needs to wait for Terran to get out onto the map, make his marine medic move out, and then just jump on it immediately. Terran's scan goes off. What does he scan? Did, did Beast transfer drones to the natural again? Just like on the Polyport game. Oh, he may have actually done that. We've got the Ling jumping on top of the Marines. All the Marines are going to die. But the Fire Bats are going to save the day. SCV's plugging the wall. Wow. I can't tell you how hard it is to go for an instant reaction like that with your workers. So a really good hold from Light. And by the way, we did see the main. And Beast did transfer his workers. Just like he did versus Rush. But this time... Terran did not commit out onto the map and did not get caught off guard. So I, I'm, I'm assuming that Light really reviewed that series versus Rush and thought that this could have been a possibility. So really good idea from Beast once again, but really good hold from Light there. He lost basically nothing and now he's up an immense amount of workers. He's got a two racks as an opener. He can put on a lot of pressure with this type of play. You know, he can go into fast tech. He can now start scaling into four racks if he wants. So the onus is going to be on Beast to make something happen. Lots of turrets going down. Bunker at the natural. Lots of turrets. Really no way for Beast to do much damage. But I will say, Vermeer, in my experience at bottom left, it is kind of hard to defend your natural with turrets. The turrets just don't seem like they're in a great... Uh, don't seem like you can, can be put in a great place. So maybe Beast can exploit that vulnerability. Instead, he's going to the main. Cancels one of those turrets, or, or kills the SCV building the turret, I mean. In the main of light, I think Factory just now started at the bottom side of his base. So it is going to be a tech follow-up instead of a four racks. Now, Light knows that this is mega all-in, so that's why you see him building just a billion turrets. He knows as long as he doesn't die, he's gonna be fine. Instant reaction to try and repair that turret. But the Mews have gotten into a sweet spot. There's no support for these Marines. The Marines are kind of funneling. Two more Marines. Okay, did Beast do it? I think they made a more. Too many Marines. Beast may suck out here. Beast is losing all of the heroes, and that's probably going to be easy. I don't think there's enough Marines. Okay, he actually doesn't GG. I thought the way he was using his Mutalus, he was just going to tap out right there. But he has more Mutalus waiting for him. He's still at 7, so he still has the magic number to kill workers. But that was not the trade he was looking for. He had like 10 to begin with, so he lost 7 in, the, in that engagement. That's... A big loss, to say the least. Billions of turrets being built. Like, absolutely just an absurd amount of turrets being built by Light here. He knows, like I said, if he does not die to the Mutalus, he's likely to win the game. We've got Starport started. I'm not sure if he's going to go Valkyrie or if he's going to go Vessel. That looks like an army, so it is going to be Valkyrie. He knows if we shut down the Mutalus, the game's over. So, really smart move from... Light. Here we go, round two. We're just going to jump on this turret, but clutch repair again. Buys a lot of time. But again, the marine count is not that big. Uh, he may actually barely have enough needles to knock all these marines down. Ooh, okay. And he's on top of the starport. He can deny the armory. He can deny that from being completed. The SCVs are getting knocked down. Look at the worker count now. 27 to 23. Of course, Zerg is lacking tech and lacking a third hatch. But this was really good damage. This was the damage that he needed to do. And now he's kind of caught up in terms of econ. However, well, I was going to say, however, I think he's in trouble once the ball comes out. But I'm not too sure if that's actually true because... Terran lost so many Marines, I don't think he can actually build one Valkyrie and attack. Like, I don't think that's a possibility. So Zerg, oh, he loses almost all of his Mutalus there, and he lost an Overlord. Okay, what's that? Hydra... 
He's gonna try and go Hydra Guardian. I don't know though. It got scanned and he lost all of his Mutalis. That's gonna be such a commitment to the gas. Will how many Guardians will he be able to afford plus Hydralis? I don't know, man. We do have three racks. Plus the add-on going down for the factory, so he's gonna have tanks also coming in. What's that drone setting up for? It's gonna be for a defiler mount? There's no way, right? Oh wow, it is gonna be a defiler mount. Okay. I really did think that this was gonna be Guardian Hydra. Instead, it is going to be an attempt to salvage the game with lurkers plus defilers. But here comes the first move out. Two Valkyries, Marine Medic. Beast, you saw him have like 23 or 24 drones a moment ago. Now he's in full on desperation, trying to put down a couple of sunken just to not die. Good patrol micro right there. Ends up killing both of the Scourge, and this might just be it. Ooh, maybe he feels like, like he doesn't have enough, but I actually think he does. I think he could kill the Hydras easily. I think the Mutas are just kind of non-existent unit. Rockery coming in, gonna shut down those Mutas easily. And there it is, GG. What a hold from Light. Good attempt from Zerg to make it happen with the Mutalis. But I think the first engagement where he lost the seven is really what did him in. If he had have saved even just a couple, like two or three, I think maybe he could have potentially killed off the armory or killed off the starport or something. He obviously would have had a better trade versus the Marines. And maybe he could have snowballed the game into a victory. But either way, it was a really close game despite the Ling all in not really working. But Light does tie it up two to two. Let's get into game five now. We are gonna be now going into Luna. Alrighty, once again on the left side, we have our Terran, it's Light. And then in the bottom left, oh, we've got a four pool. I had a feeling we may get to see it in one of these games. And he is not only four pulling, but he's also getting lucky scouting Terran in the right direction. Now, Luna, back when I played, the map had a little bit of a different setup at the natural. It was completely wide open there. A lot of potential for run by, but I think in this version, you know, it's been tightened up a little bit and maybe these can catch him going for like a, a, a try and go for like a semi wall at the natural and if you semi wall the natural roll like this it's really hard to get your scvs down in time and also hard to build the second depot in time before uh before the um wings get there so not only okay and all, as cruiser's pointing out there is a gap right there this is going to be a hard hole. Light needs to scout Beast first, but every game so far this series, he has not scouted him first. I also think he has gone horizontal with his scout each time also, if I remember correctly. So we may see a very fast game. <laughs> this game may be over. Barracks comes down. Man, it is so hard to stop a four pool with a forward racks like this and look at this that's something i also had forgotten that you can see the the wall from over the ledge he just needs to hide his overlord now just don't show your overlord where'd the where'd the lights scv go did it go top right oh it actually went vertical this time lucky for him he's gonna actually see it coming but the Rax is still so far away. Oh, he's not able to avoid the SCV and instant reaction. These few seconds are all you need is Terran to plug up that wall. Oh, I'm gonna try and desperately. Oh no, he builds a bunker. Uh, okay. He's gonna just try the hole with the SCV. It's gonna be enough DPS to actually hold the links. Good surround. Just needs to buy time. Look at the cold from Light. Oh, that looked easy. He made this look like a joke. Oh my gosh. Okay, maybe I'm just completely wrong here. But, you know, I've played games of like four pools on Dark Origin. 
and the links just generally get there so fast that it's really hard to hold, but Light made it look super easy. Okay, so I guess we're just directly going into game six. I don't think Beast is gonna try that again because that got shut down immediately. I do have to say that it was a lucky scout pattern for Light because in all the previous games he went horizontal. This one game, he ended up going vertical in spots of four pool. It must be nice to have that type of luck. But sometimes luck is on your side. Let's get into game six. It is going to be retro. Not only is it retro, it is retro top right for light. Another great position for walling. And, you know, last game we saw a four pool, but before the, that game, I had mentioned we have not seen a single early pool. And I think out of all the games to pull out the early pool, this is it. Top right, one of the best positions for an eight racks. You also got bottom left, which is fully wallable, so you know Terran's not there. Top left, I've actually come to know that there is a full wall there. So you've got Terran on two positions that are going for, um, that have the potential to full wall, and generally when they can full wall like that, Eight racks is likely, so I think I think we really do need to see something like a 12-4 and overpool this time. But this time around, Light is not going to eight racks again. Another depot at the natural. He's just going to full wall in again, but no pressure with an eight racks. And will Beast build that early pool this time? That is the question. Not yet. Hey, yeah, it doesn't look like it's actually going to happen. I'm surprised. I thought for sure we may fi finally see an early aggressive pool opener, but instead it is going to be another 12 hatch from him. I guess with the tournament on the line and with you know him losing with a four pool, losing with a ling flood in game one, all the games he's he won have been from macro opener. So I feel like if that's what's winning at the time, he might as well just continue to go for it. We do have another instant scout from light and again it's vertical so you know i sometimes you wish you could get like just ask a, a question to these pros like something as simple as this like why did you vertical scout or horizontal scout this time right like what was what was the logic like you could intercept the overlord going at mid uh at mid right if if beast was bottom right but he didn't even check deep into mid right so that clearly wasn't the the, uh, the reason, but he did scout bottom right, did spot. I, did he even go in deep enough to see that there's no natural? I don't even know, man, but he just directly went to bottom left after kind of only semi-scouting. <laughs> and he will see... Actually, I don't... Is this three hatch before pool? Okay. All right, it is three hatch, but it is not before pool. And I don't know if you really want to play this type of style versus someone like Light. My opinion is there's been a reason Zerg players have been going for 2 hatch or 2.5 hatch. And it's because 5 racks is a killer build. It is a nuts build. He does see it is a 3rd hatch on location though and he knows where it is. So it's not going to actually be a two, uh, 5 racks. It is going to be a 2 racks and that's an extremely fast gas. That is a unusually fast gas. This is going to be a 320 Academy, really quick. He's going to put on a lot of pressure here, try and knock down this third base. Actually, is it a 320 Academy versus Academy? Okay, there we go, 330 Academy. So not as fast as I was expecting it to be, but he really does not want this Zerg to get this third base up and running. And the problem for Beast is it got scouted. So now he has two options. He's either going to have to Ling Flood, which... So far, he's done really well with the flooding lings plus mutas, but not just lings alone. And if he doesn't ling flood, then he's going to have to build like two or three sunkens at each base. So it cripples your eco big time. And that just gives uh, complete control to Terran on the map and also allows them to attack into something like a tank push. Now Beast 
Just now starting to get... Oh, those Marines! They are locked in, dude. Hopefully, Light notices because he probably has his entire army hotkeyed all in one group. Probably thinks that his army's there. Dude, if, if he loses this game because he doesn't have his whole army and, like, Lings just jump on these free, muta or free, free Marines, that would be heartbreaking. But luckily for him, there are not additional Lings being built. Instead, Beast is powering like crazy. He's up to 23 workers right now. Light also diligently scouting with that SCV confirmed that there weren't that many uh, Lings out. And here we go. We are going to be moving out with eight Marines, two Medics. There are no Sunkins up, man. He also has no vision. He doesn't even see this move out coming. Okay, he's going to be building Lings, but Stim's going to be kicking in pretty soon. He scans. He sees no. He sees nothing at the natural. Yeah, so he backs off immediately because he knows that tons of links are being built. So this one move out already did a lot of damage. And as a follow up, we've got four racks coming down. eBay coming down for plus one weapon. Not going to be fast tech. Instead, he just wants to put a ton of pressure onto this third base. Spire, how far along is it? Maybe half. Okay, a little farther than half right now. But he knows that there's a ton of links built. So the likelihood of it being another mutiling combo in the center of the map is very high. And that means that instead of being out there, he's just going to be sitting back behind his depot wall. Or at least in front of his depot wall. Near the rest of his production. It is a five racks. There are, there's another racks being built. Floating his initial racks back into his main. So a lot of pressure here. One of the benefits of going for this two racks and the five racks is, of course, you're going to have stim in range unbelievably quick. Not going to have plus one weapon, but it may catch Beast off guard with the amount of units that he has and the quickness of the range. Turret's coming down. Light is really solidified at all of his positions. Still hesitant to move out because of all those links that he saw. Does not want to venture off. Yeah, you need to back off. Doesn't want to venture off too far out. Scan at that at that base just to make sure that there are no links there. He still doesn't know where the links actually go. He may have overstepped. There's the Marines. The links are right there. Yeah, you gotta run. You gotta run, dude. Oh, Beast. Beast's not gonna jump on it. I feel like this is the opportunity. Here he goes. Marines. Another good catch for a Beast there. He's gonna eat up this army once again. How is this happening? Light is getting his whole army caught every single time. And now, oh, well, I don't I don't know about this. Yeah, you need to back off. Beast recognizes that, hey, this was not two racks tech. This is a five racks follow up. He's gonna jump into the main. Doesn't pick off that turret. Ooh, that turret is holding on by a string. Wow, we're all in. It is going to be mass laying mutas into a five racks. Uh, I wish he could have read this situation a little better. There's no way that this can work. Five Rex is way too strong. If he had just powered instead of trying to run in Lings and Mutas into this, he would have been in a good position. But because of how Light had played the previous games, he thought it was going to be fast tech. And now he's stuck with Ling Mutas, no Econ, into a Five Rex, where plus one weapon, sure, it's not completed just yet, but it's going to be completing pretty soon, and he's just still full on committed here. There's a, there's a wall. If Terran just doesn't move out and builds like, what, two fire bats? I don't think this army can ever die. Uh, you gotta, yeah, you've gotta jump on it. Anytime the, the Marines step out, you've gotta try and pounce on it and try and get the engagement, but there's just no engagement to be had. The Marine count is absurd. Also, the, the worker count is, there's a huge gap. 38 workers to 22 drones. Uh, this might be it. This might be the last stand. The Mutas, I don't think, are going to win the battle this time. The Lings, they don't get the surround they were looking for. And all the Marines, or all the Mutas are going to die to the Marines. And that is it. Beast, he will be taken down in fourth place. So well done from Light. It was a good mix-up, finally, in the last game. Instead of going for the fast tech, going into five racks. And he completely mind-gamed Beast with that follow-up. I do have to say, I think Beast played really well in the series. You could tell that he was still trying to make his uh, aggressive style work with the Ling and Mutas, but, and he caught Light multiple times. He even caught Light in the last game out of position. But 
I wish he had played more like he did on Champion versus Rush, where he actually went into macro with the Hydras and the Lurkers. But either way, VC had a great showing here. He did much better than I think a lot of people anticipated, and he took down a lot of good players. And in the series that he lost versus Rush and Light, they were 4-2, to two, if I remember correctly. Like, they were close series. So well done to him. Let's get into a rundown of how today went. We, of course, know Light won on Game 1, beating the Ling Alvin. Then Beast coming back in Games 2 and 3. Light winning on Vermeer and somehow holding that 4-pool on Luna. On Luna, I don't know how the pros do it. Every time I see a 4-pool or a 5-pool or something and I see a 4 with racks, I'm like, dude, this guy's dead. But they end up holding anyways. Why don't my games look like that? Why can't I hold a 4-pool with the racks at the natural? And then, of course, Light winning on Retro. Did not get to Sandstorm. <laughs> I think we saw like one game on there. I can't even remember. But anyways, we're going to be going into the bracket now. And just like we were mentioning at the beginning of the cast, our finals is going to be Rush versus Snow. High, high, high expectations for this. Can Snow win like 4-0, 4-1? Uh, you know, have a 90% win rate versus Terran this series or this season? Or is Rush going to make... Not necessarily an upset, but disrupt that win percentage. You know, in the Light versus Snow series, coming into that series, I was expecting to see Light play upgrade style. We didn't see that at all. Like, his build was never that. I, I, he played aggro, he's pulled multiple times versus a 12 Nexus. Uh, I really do hope Rush plays to his strengths, unlike Light. Uh, and Rush's strengths are also the upgrade style, and also playing that Starport build into 5 Factory timing. So that is going to be it for today, guys. Thank you so much for watching. We'll be back with the finals in just a little bit of time, and I hope to see you there for the conclusion of StarCast TV Star League Season 1.